Hello, garden lovers. We are excited that the cooler weather is finally here. The triple digits are gone until next year, and this week we are getting in some cool weather veggies. The first one on our list is radishes. We are sowing radish seeds. They are one of our favorite cooler season veggies to grow. We eat them like little apples. We add them to salad dishes, Mediterranean style meals, and we have some great varieties that we'll be growing. Radishes grow so fast. If you are just starting out and going to be growing radishes for the first time, you are gonna have so much fun watching how fast they pop up out of the soil. We just make a little trench with our fingers, sprinkle some radish seeds down the trench, cover it up lightly, and then once the little seedlings pop up, get them thinned out. Next on our list is spinach. Spinach is a bit tricky to grow with all the pill bug activity that we have. So we grow them in cells first and then get them transplanted once they're a decent size. If we direct sowed them, they would be mowed down right away once the little seedling popped up. Here we have a old baby beet. Beets are further down our list we are definitely gonna be sowing more beet seeds. This bed was taken over by strawberry runners. You'll see that at the end of the video. So we'll go ahead and let the watercress take over the edges of this bed going forward. Checking for pill bugs, they love to hide under the cells. And next we'll get lots of compost mixed into the soil. These guys love lots of nutrients. And of course, we are sowing more lettuce seeds and transplanting. Although we do grow lettuce year round, it is very difficult for most varieties because lettuce is a cooler weather veggie. You can see here, this one has bolted and most varieties do not do well in the heat, but we do have a couple that can take it under the right conditions. But now that the high temps are gone, we can grow more varieties of lettuce that don't grow well in the heat, like Burpee Bib. This variety is called Nevada. We picked it up at a local nursery. First time growing it, we'll see how it does. The little lettuce starts have been growing under the cattle panel raised bed. The shade cloth has provided protection from the intense heat and now we'll be moved out to all the beds since the 90 degree weather is behind us. Here we have some what I call cut and grow, but most everybody calls it cut and come again. And since this cattle panel raised bed design turns into a greenhouse in the winter months, we'll be harvesting chilies all throughout the winter. I'll attach a link up in the right hand corner of that cattle panel greenhouse design. Next on our list is mustards. We love mustard greens. And like spinach, they bolt so fast, we can only grow them in the cooler weather. But the great thing about mustards is they can take a light frost with no problems. This packet here we got from a local nursery. It is a mustard mix. And we have lots of volunteers popping up from the last time we grew wild mustards in this area. This is such a beautiful, delicious mustard variety. I believe it's just called wild mustards. I'll attach the seed packet information here. Look at this little baby just popping up. But our absolute favorite mustard to grow is giant red mustard. Here is an image from a couple seasons ago. What a beautiful variety. Another great one is Dragon Tongue. Next on our list is to sow some more beet seeds. This is our all seasons raised bed. It's in an area of the garden where it gets direct sunlight till about noon and then indirect sunlight the rest of the day. So it's been a great place to grow our leafy greens year round. And as you can see here, we have lots of little lettuce starts, some beautiful nasturtium, 
and lots of spinach. Although it does get too hot to grow spinach in the summer months here, it bolts very quickly. Here are some baby beets under the Apache green onions. They're kind of buried. We love this variety. It's a beet that's about the size of a radish. We just sow a bunch of seeds in a cell. We thin them to about five per cell. And once they're about a couple inches tall, get them transplanted. This little open section here will be a perfect spot to transplant about four cells. Next on our list is transplanting broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. Since we're growing no dig, we move the soil just enough to add a soil mixture that is lots of compost mixed with some Dr. Earth soil. The rest of the soil will remain intact so that the microbial life will not be disturbed. Soil health is at the top of the list to have a successful vegetable garden. Look at the size of this guy. He's about a nine inch long earthworm. This was the very first bed that we installed a little over five years ago. Here is a picture of our backyard as a blank canvas. Since then, we have gotten a lot accomplished and have created some of our best memories. This is a dinosaur kale root harvested at the soil level. Left the root in the soil to keep the soil intact and now that it's time to plant again, it just popped right out. Green and burgundy broccoli is in. We grabbed this green broccoli from a local nursery. Don't normally grow green broccoli, but the health benefits are so great we had to add it to the garden. So I'll be eating it either raw or lightly sauteed. Not a fan of it overcooked. Next on our list is we got to get these guys covered to protect them from the pests. Covering our red cabbages is a must. Otherwise, the aphids, which unfortunately are year round here in inland Southern California, would prevent the heads from forming. We're really stoked on this mesh. It's our first season using it. You could see here some baby caterpillar damage. That happened before we got them transplanted. Flipped the little starts upside down, removed all the baby caterpillars. And now, so far, this mesh is working out great. We secure it with these stakes and the wind moves through it very nicely and we get extremely high winds here. And so far, it's working excellent. Next on our list is to get more kale planted. We just transplanted lots of kale and collards and we're sowing more kale seeds. We picked up these collards from a local nursery and this bed also has some older kale plants. I love the dinosaur kale and so do the chicks. This is their staple food year round, so we need to be growing it everywhere. And we also just planted some baby kale plants. And since the chicks eat greens every day, they could go through a lot of greens. So we're experimenting with growing three kale plants per five gallon bucket. We'll see how that goes. And we just secure it to the fence line and they tear it up. This is the beautiful hazel munching on some tree collards and the beautiful gingy ginger. She is such a beautiful girl cleaning her feathers. And next on the list, we are starting more Asian greens. This is the beautiful Violetta. What a beautiful and delicious variety to grow. Here's the seed packet information. They grow excellent in the fall temperatures here in Southern California. And once we get into December, we will sow some seeds in the cattle panel double raised bed. That turns into a greenhouse 
in the winter months. Another favorite variety that we love to grow is Purple Lady. This one's just a baby. Oh, it's getting munched on. I'm gonna have to get the black light out because the grasshoppers love to eat these greens. We also love Red Kingdom and Red Cloud. And just like the spinach, we have to start these in little cells. Otherwise, they would get mowed down by the pill bugs and the grasshoppers. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, here is the bed that the strawberry runners just took over. It's amazing how many they produce, but it gives us lots of transplants. We love the Chandler strawberry variety, so we keep moving them all around the property. We look for healthy root growth. You can see here, there we go. You can see some healthy root growth right there. And we cut off the runner and get it moved into a little container with some Edna's Best and some compost mixed in. And when setting in the soil, we make sure that the crown stays above the soil level. And you could see we got a lot of transplants that we're gonna get out of this bed. The fun thing about growing them in the raised bed is they tend to spill out over the bed and plant themselves at the base and continue to plant themselves as they crawl around on the ground. We went through, cut the runners and dug up the plants. Strawberry plants are so durable, they're not affected by some root damage. As you'll see in a few minutes, we even dug up some three-year-old strawberry plants and moved them to our pathway. This is my beautiful mama. She's a master gardener and is where my love for gardening came from. We transplanted three flats and we'll share with family and friends. Now just gonna go through real quick and cut off any runners so that the plants can focus on themselves and root growth. And now I'll head over to our stone pathway where we transplanted the more mature strawberry plants to show you how quickly they bounce back. You could see here all of the large outer leaves have died, but here we have some new growth in the very center. So these guys are gonna do fine, and what a great variety, you gotta try it. It's very large, super sweet strawberry that produces twice a year. We grow enough for our family and for the birdies to enjoy, but these we will cover up to make sure that we get to enjoy them. And I did forget to mention peas. We are planting lots of peas right now. All right, for more short videos on how to grow food in Southern California, hit the subscribe button. Remember, something doesn't come from nothing. Hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden. Sure.